Hey everyone, Jordan here. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ASRock Z690 Riptide motherboard. This is the first of the Z690 boards I've looked at, but this is going to be a great board for anyone that's looking to build with maybe the 12600 or the 12700K. Gives you all the overclocking options that you'd expect with the Z series motherboard. Loads of great features, but it keeps the price down as well. So it cuts out all the unnecessary stuff that you're not really going to use, but maintains all the kind of key features that you'll be looking for in the Z series motherboard. So in this one, we're going to be showing you the features that this motherboard offers, what comes included in the box as well. It retails for about £190, so it is on the lower end of the Z690 platform range of motherboards. So we'll take a little look and show you what it can offer. I also quickly want to say a big thank you to Scan for sending out the 12900K. We're going to be doing lots of other motherboards and builds and things like that as well so stay tuned if you're not already don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell so you don't miss any future upcoming content so you might think this looks a little bit bare but this was actually one of two samples asrock had um, of course if you're going to order one online you'll get a full retail box but it was so early that they actually had no box available for this so that's why it's a little bit bare but of course you'll get you know all the normal retail stuff should you buy one online so firstly i'm going to actually put the board to the side just show you what you get included in the box or in my case in the bag so you do get quite a nice accessory bundle so we've got some normal sas cables we've got one right angle and one straight we've got loads of screws for our m.2 four there and then you've also got another standoff so maybe if you're going to be using a different length card you can install that we've got some velcro asrock ties a a phantom gaming keycap of course the IO shield is a nice padded one, a driver's disc, I really hope we don't see discs in the future, we really don't need them at this point, and then a the little ASRock postcard and then finally you get a GPU brace included as well. So this will actually screw in around about there on your motherboard to the end and then you can adjust where your graphics card is going to be supported so it gives you a little bit of additional support on the back i quite like this actually because it's not one that sticks out you know a lot of people have the kind of poles that stick up from the bottom of the case not really a fan of those personally so this is quite nice so that it kind of all fits in with the back and isn't going to be quite as visible so let's put that aside and have a look at the board itself so you can see it's quite minimal we don't have massive heat sinks on this model but as i did say it's more of a um, budget offering for the z690 platform but we'll go around what we've got on here anyway. So top left, we've got our eight pin EPS connector. We also got an additional four pin. This isn't going to be a board that you're going to be doing massively high overclocks on. So you're not going to actually have the option to put another eight pin in. A lot of other motherboards that are going to be built for maybe the 12900K will have that power connector, but this isn't aimed for that. So it's not going to include it. Well, we've got a nice peel on the heatsink here. Let's just get rid of that. That reveals a nice brushed metal part on the heatsink with the Azrock logo. Very nice. There's also another one down here. Let's do this one here. And again, that's also brushed. So along by the aluminium heatsink, we've got 13 phase Dr. Moss power. There's also premium memory alloy chokes, which reduce 70% of the core loss compared to iron power chokes. Also, if you're not familiar, 1700 does need a lot more mounting pressure as well. So don't be surprised if you have to push this socket lever down pretty hard to get it back in. The socket is actually higher up than on the previous generation of boards as well. So if you were to take the same screws that are included on your cooler and screw it all the way down, it'll actually be too much pressure on the IHS. So all the 1700 screws are ever so slightly shorter. So you're not going to get that, you know, you're not going to be wrenching it down onto the... Uh, top of the processor so yeah make sure you're definitely using a 1700 kit and not a previous generation one that you've already got so to the right of that of course we've got our dim slots this is going to support ddr4 memory so it gives you greater compatibility than trying to find ddr5 which seems to be rarer than hen's teeth at the moment 24 pin motherboard power there's a usb 3.2 which is gen 2 type a and there's an additional one down here which is coming out right angled from the board then we've got our USB type C port, which is gen two by two. So 20 gigabits per second. Further on, we've got our SAS port. So there's six of those there. There's an additional two down the bottom here. In terms of RGB, if that's your thing, we've got two addressable RGB headers right at the top. There's also a, another one down on the bottom left-hand side. HD audio, we've got our usual front panel stuff as well. And then there's also a standard RGB header as well. 
So in terms of expansion slots and storage, we've got an M.2 armor slot here, which I've taken the screws out so we can reveal the primary slot for your storage. Now being this is Intel 12th gen, this will support gen five, but most commonly we're gonna be using gen four at the moment. Then below that, you've got a PCIe gen five expansion slot for your graphics card. And you've also got some additional M.2 slots. So we've got a Hyper M.2 and then an Ultra, which is not quite as fast at the bottom end of the board. And then you've also got the M.2 Wi-Fi slot with a nice little convenient expansion slot should you want to add Wi-Fi to this board. I believe they do actually have a Wi-Fi version of it, but should you want to add that one after, and you can easily do that with that slot there. Now, a lot of people are finding the 12th gen from Intel quite hot as well, but this motherboard has got six fan headers, which is quite convenient. So let's show you where these are. We've got two up by the dim slots, and there's an additional one up by the top right by the screw hole, one further down by the USB-C header, there's one in the center at the very bottom of the board. And then you've got one on the left just above the M.2 armor slot. So in terms of rear IO, we've got a BIOS flashback, which is nice and convenient. HDMI 2.1, PS2 for anyone that wants to use any old school peripherals. USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A, so it's 10 gigabits per second. Next to that, we've got two USB 2 ports. Then we've got USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2, which is a Type C or 20 gigabits per second. 2.5 gigabit killer LAN, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Then finally, we've got all our HD audio options and an optical SP diff out. So overall, I think this has got a really nice amount of functions and um, features for the price. So I'm really looking forward to getting a processor in this and making up a PC with it. Probably gonna use this for a 12600 or maybe a 12700K build. I've also got some more upcoming content around Intel 12th gen and hardware related stuff. So make sure you get subscribed to Ding the Bow so you don't miss any future upcoming content. But I think for this one, this is pretty much it. So I hope you've enjoyed the overview of the ASRock Z690 PG Riptide motherboard. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for ASRock sending this out for me to look at and we'll see you all in the next one.